we recording? Yep. Canon is ready. Fujifilm, of course, we got the tally lamp. Here we go. What is up, guys? As you see from the title of this video, today we're gonna be doing a little test. Forgive me if my ramble on a little bit, but I'm just doing a test. I wanna test how the Canon EOS M with the raw Magic Lanterns video does as a big cam in a studio like uh, YouTube, you know, kind of headshot kind of environment, like a B shot for um, interview. So as you could see, it's been right behind the Fujifilm X-H1 all along, shooting me in a little angle with a nice tight crop because I do have a vintage lens, a 28 mil f2.8 lens wide open. And the mode I'm shooting at is the 5K, of course, the light dies. And the mode that I'm shooting at is the 5K FRTP, which as you all know, is a little bit anamorphic, but what I'm doing is I'm forcing it to shoot at 16 by nine. So that way it will play nice with the same aspect ratio as the Fujifilm. The Fujifilm is shooting at 1080p at the 24p, 16 by 9, 100 megabits per second. By the way, the Canon is shooting at 10 bits. Now, this is a topic that I wanted to get into in this video. Um, Fujifilm is shooting with the F-Log, and as we all know, it's only 8-bit internally. A lot of people in YouTube tend to like just down that 8-bit codec and, you know, say it's not for F-Log. If you're shooting F-Log, you shouldn't use it. Well, that's only true if you're gonna be doing extreme coloring, if you're gonna go crazy with the colors. Yes, 10 bits is gonna be a lot more beneficial for that. F-Log has other benefits that it's not just about coloring, such as dynamic range. Now, even with an AB coder, you could still get nice dynamic range, you know, tone down, control those highlights that you see the monitors behind me and the lights shooting F-Log. It will keep all your highlights and the dark shadows in a very flat style so that they're easy to grade. Of course, there are times where it does result in banding or color noise, but in a control environment and if you shoot in the native ISO, you shouldn't have so much trouble. We're still getting great colors out of this F-Log. And also, if you haven't noticed, there are two different camera systems. Uh, we got the F-Log here for Fujifilm and Canon. I don't know what the RAW is, the DNG stuff that uh, the Magic Lantern spits out. In MLV app, my workflow is that I always just switch everything to Alexa Log C. Sometimes I play with Sony, on s log 3 and actually that's what i think i'm gonna do this time so in this video we will be shooting or converting into sony s log 3. now the reason is because i found that s log 3 was easier to match with the fujifilm's f log because f log and sony log the s log are very similar in a lot of ways and their lots are very interchangeable as you've seen some of my videos in the past I have even used the Eternal lot on the Sony S-Log2. That's why I decided to keep or convert everything here into S-Log3 and hopefully with the 10 bit, it will help me change the colors so that it will look a little bit like the Fujifilm colors. Now with that said, we do lose a lot of resolution. So here comes another argument. What is better, resolution versus high bit rate? You guys can talk about it in the comment section down below and please keep it civil. We just want to educate each other and um, yeah, so any constructive comments and questions are all welcome. Personally, I think they both have their place in filming. High resolution comes very convenient when you're shooting architecture, uh, when you're shooting nature, you know, you want to get all those details in the leaves and the, the animals. Then again, high bit rates are very convenient for getting color depth. So when you have a lot of depth in your image, whatever it is that you're shooting, um, for example, say a person, if you're doing a portrait video, you're gonna need a lot of bit rate to be able to get color tones, all the different shades of the skins and whatnot. 
10 bit, over 10 bit code will help a lot. Now I'm only shooting in 10 bit right now so that I can get continuous recording. When I shoot in 5K, if I shoot in 12 bit or 14 bit, I can't shoot continuously. So I'm limited to 10 bit, which sounds like like a bad thing you know oh i'm in 10 bit but even my fujifilm can't even do that so yeah it's pretty cool so for how how has the test been have you guys enjoyed this whole over the head dual camera setup so that you could get kind of like a interview feel kind of style i'm just experimenting here you know with my youtube setup hopefully the overall result is gonna be worth the trouble you know, will it, does it make my videos a little bit more professional? Hopefully that's the case. Let me know in the comment section down below. But that's it for me. You know, I just wanted to do a quick test, um, talk about the differences between the two systems and the cameras that I'm shooting with and why I'm shooting them together. Guys, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, I recommend you to subscribe. Hit the little bell notification to let you know when more Canon EOS M videos come out from the community i have received a lot lots of positive feedback comments and likes and just views that actually the usm videos get a higher views than my fujifilm ones so <laughs> that says a lot about the community that the usm magic lantern uh, community has so i really appreciate the support guys when i get you know get the hang of doing the whole editing thing i'm going to share my workflow with you guys so far it's getting easier actually by the day the more i play with it the easier it gets mov is a done deal right now i'm working with davinci how to um, edit the raw dng files yeah and that's about it that's i just wanted to ramble a little bit talking about my two systems and future videos and projects that i got coming up so i would love to have you guys join me in those videos when they come up. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. All right, Fujifilm is out. And the Canon, are you still recording? Yes, still recording.